Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Philosophical Friday. I'm joined by Peter Birmingham. Uh, this is uh, Duncan Palamordas, and we're going to have another discussion in the middle of holidays. Happy holidays to everybody. Peter, how are you? I'm very good, Duncan. Uh, thank you very much, and hello to our to the listener. Um, yeah, really good. Excited to delve into uh, what's what's likely to be a pretty topical um subject this week something that i think is probably on a lot of people's minds that's right and what is that so we're going to discuss the idea of goal setting so coming up to new year everybody's making resolutions plans plans going forward how their 2023 is how they want it to look and uh, we're going to delve into some of the some of the topics around that about you know what are goals why are they important and how to achieve them and where, where the pitfalls are. Absolutely, absolutely. And before we, we started the um, the podcast today, uh, you were telling me that uh, you were you were doing some research. I mean, you obviously done your own reading. Uh, you mentioned uh, at Atomic Habits. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about your, your own research, the things that you find important, and uh, we can start setting up the, the stage. Yeah, as as I said to you when we were we were off air, I think like the most recent book I had read um, to do with you know changing habits and you know generally improving and, and making goals was Atomic Habits by James Clear. I think it's a I think it's a book that even if people haven't read, they have probably heard of because it's mm-hmm. it's been a huge um, it's it's sold well over a million copies. Um, so I, I delved a little bit back into that. It had been a while since I'd read it, so I just wanted to recap on some of the some of the topics that he discussed and how how he how he approaches you know setting goals and um, getting better. Absolutely. You know? And for the listener who may not have read the book, if you were to summarize its idea, like in in a, in a couple of sentences. Um, what would you say, or like its main ideas in a couple of sentences, what would you say those are? I think the main ideas are to keep your goals achievable, mm-hmm. uh, constant focus on small gains, mm-hmm. um, not to overstretch mm-hmm. what you're, you know, don't, don't aim too high, always, always make them, uh, always make them achievable like that as i said going for going for small gains make sure it's interesting that what you're what you're striving for is going to hold your interest because if you if it's if you're chasing something that you have no love or passion for it's going to burn out pretty quick you're not going to you're not going to stay on track so that's that's kind of the essence of where you come from and um, he has actually four four specific laws that he as, as he calls them within the book and that's pretty um yeah making it obvious make it attractive make it easy that, make it that's, easy. There, that's the that's the summation that's a very quick summation of, of where he's coming from absolutely and we need to, to keep track of that right i mean make, keep your goals achievable uh so that you protect yourself against failure do not underestimate the cumulative effect right even a very small uh, difference per day can accumulate uh can accumulate over time uh, and uh, you know make it so that you whatever it is that you do it can be sustainable right uh I, I remember and i've mentioned that before uh, in the podcast i remember a friend of mine asked me for advice duncan you know how can i want to get in shape how many days a week would you recommend me going to the gym um like five days a week six days a week and my answer was you know i mean obviously as many as you can but that wasn't my answer because that's not very helpful to say to somebody as many as you can my answer was go once a week just if you can go once a week for like you know 20 minutes but every week it has to be every week that's a very good way to start and from there you can adjust but once a week not not five times a week not every day not you know just start with once a week right and same applies to poker and I, and I, yeah and I, I do think that's a mistake that that people make and um, they go to especially with things like weight loss and so they go too hard too fast and they inevitably burn out very quickly. And one of the things that um, James Clear is a proponent of is when you're setting your goals, not only set a target, 
would set an upper limit. Mm -hmm. That's right. So let's say for the poker, let's say for the poker player, let's say that your goal for the first three months of the year are to play at least 15,000 online hands. Mm -hmm. It's an idea to have that you will not play more than 20. Mm -hmm. So don't like, you I mean, you could go out the fourth month, your goal is 15, play 25 or 30, but then it comes to February and you're just four out because you, you push yourself too hard. Right. So set an upper limit as well as setting the target. And I think that's, that is a really good idea. Um, because it does keep you, it keeps you away from that burnout and, you know, sort of losing interest in it, you know, just overexposure to whatever you're doing. Absolutely. And, and, and that is actually tying to a concept that hopefully we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, the idea of, uh, there is a difference between the goal itself, which in this case is, you know, how many hands and the vision and the vision is to become, which is a greater kind of thing, to become a better poker player. So what uh, James is trying to do there with his advice, he's basically saying, listen, it may be better, you know, to be very specific, to protect your vision by not overdoing a certain goal, right? So what he's trying to say there is like, okay, if you burn yourself out, you may miss the forest for the trees. So for that reason, it's okay to, to uh, restrain yourself a little bit. Don't go overboard so that you can get the, the bigger, the bigger bounty, which is of course, to be a better, a better poker player. So goals can be positive, can be negative, can be all sorts of things, but they typically look at the higher price at the high reward, if you will. And that high reward is typically some sort of a, of a vision, which we can, which we can get to it. Um, Excellent example, Peter. That, that was that was an excellent example uh, with, with with poker hands in particular. And so to set up the stage, let's start. Uh, let's start sort of simple, right? I mean, so we can go backwards now. So sort of, that was like sort of like a preview. Um, what are goals, um, and why are goals important in your mind? So I think goals are goals are targets are targets that we set for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So. To give us something to give us something to uh, work towards so that we're we're moving forward with a purpose rather than just moving forward aimlessly. Right. And I think they are important for 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 focusing us, like focus of focusing us as individuals um in sort of the corporate world for focusing the team, getting them to um having something to work towards um a target that's achievable that you know, something that when you get there, you can feel proud of yourself that I've 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 achieved this now. This is, this is like a milestone for yourself. And I think that's from a, a psychological point of view, that's very important for us as people because I think we're I think we're naturally drawn to um achieving targets. I think we work best when we're working towards something rather than just you know meandering through life or work or whatever it is and um, that focus is really important absolutely absolutely and that is exactly what happens in in day to day as well like you know when uh the the goal of avoiding uh aimlessness is part of the reason why we want to want to set up these uh, these goals uh, as well and uh they i would say that the interesting thing is that um, it all comes together. If we're thinking uh, the uh, the term that I usually use, um, and we, Brad and I we, we've talked about this also in the past, is that goals are part of what would I I would call outsourcing, self outsourcing, the idea of basically uh, taking pressure from our future self by putting it on our present self when um, we're calm, we're ready, and we have all the resources available to us. So at a time of our choosing, we sort of like help, uh, a time of our choosing in the present, we help our future self. So this is what I would call self-outsourcing. And this comes in several forms, like scheduling, is one example of self-outsourcing. We want to take it out of our brain, so we don't want to think exactly uh, what we're going to do next. That's why we put it on a schedule. So now the schedule does the heavy lifting 
uh, for us. Uh, another form of self-outsourcing is, of course, the goals. So instead of, you know, having to worry about this aimlessness that you just uh, described very eloquently, right? Instead of having to worry about aimlessness every minute of the day, what we can do instead is saying, but wait a minute, what did I say? Um, how did I say I'm going to deal with that aimlessness? Oh, now it's time to go to the gym. Got it. Or how I'm going to deal with uh, that aimlessness? Oh, I'm going to have to play uh, some of those 20,000 hands that I, I said I have to play. So we always look back to that you know, reference system right, and take away part of the uh, stress and the decision making. Another example that I like to, uh, to give, remember last week we were talking briefly a little bit about tilt and how yes the, the 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 worst way to get somebody off tilt is to tell them not to not tilt right because yes. literally okay. what we're doing right then and there we are putting the pressure exactly where pressure should not be right we're not like when things haven't gone our way this is not the time to make decisions this is the time to take pressure off not to, to add extra pressure by making another decision right oh i need to you know refrain myself from tilting so another example of self outsourcing that i found related to tilt is to always 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 after a hand is over to say nice hand to your opponent so that's an example of self-outsourcing, yes. right? Why is it self-outsourcing? Because there's no decision there. It's like similar to folding, auto-folding seven deuce. That's self-outsourcing. You're not making any decisions there. Like this is as close to not making a decision as it gets, right? So the auto-fold of seven deuce or saying to your opponent nice hand every time is the sort of a thing that we've done away from the table. We have already decided. So when the time comes, we almost do it automatically. We may be fuming, <laughs> And yeah. still say nice hand or still we may be fuming and still fold the seven deuce, which is, again, related to, you know, uh, the atomic habits. Also, this is how habits are being built by having that concept of, of, of self-outsourcing. What, what do we think of that? What are some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's yeah, it, it does. That makes a lot of sense. And sort of, I think, from um, a poker point of view to sort of simplify it back a little bit it could be seen as you know like that as you say back to a basic strategy that you have when you're playing and um, you know this is what i do on this board this is what i do in this spot like even simpler again pre-flop range right you know exactly what hand you play and it cuts out on decision to be right so we don't have to make you know you're not making any tough decisions you're just you're in a flow state and then when the when a tough decision possibly does come along that you have to make, you have your mind hasn't been burnt out by lots of little decisions. You know, you're just you're taking you're taking the uncertainty of this is what I do in this spot, and that just it makes everything ninety percent of the stuff can probably be done on autopilot then, and the ten percent is where we make most of the gains anyway. So like keeping your mind free to make to be in the best possible position to to make those decisions when the time comes. Absolutely, yes, exactly. And it takes a, a lot of pressure off. And, and going back to, 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 to goals, I think that goals are, again, part of self-outsourcing, right? I mean, we're saying we're taking a lot of pressure uh, from our future selves by saying, okay, here is some guidelines. Here is your future guidance. I'm going to take you by the hand when you feel hopeless and alone <laughs> in the future. And of course, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it is yeah. it is true because like we can look at this, you know, goals that we've written down or uh, set in stone or whatever it is. And then in, in moments of despair and hopelessness, you know, we're going to look ourselves in the past when we're in the future and say, okay, yeah, help me out of this glut, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so again, I like to think of goals as part, as part of uh, uh, self-outsourcing. And again, self-outsourcing being, being very broad. And also I like to, on a different level, I like to think of goals personally as part of a, of a greater vision. Um, what, what, what do you think um, goals fail Sometimes, why do you think you know people 
Uh, you know, we all, we often see and hear people saying, oh, you know, it's it's a, it's a new year, new year resolution. And by the time, you know, like February hits, sometimes before January ends, you know, like people are falling out of it. What do you think are some, some pitfalls, why that happens and how we can potentially resolve that? So I think, I think first and foremost, one of the biggest reasons people fail is lack of a clear plan. Mm -hmm. they've, no, they've no actual roadmap laid out for what they want to achieve. So they may have an idea, but they don't know how they're going to get there. And like that, again, that can cause um, problems because you spend more time, again, making decisions. And this comes back to the self-outsourcing because if you lay your plan out, right at the start you can just you can just follow it um, and you have a better chance of getting there so i think i think a lack of a clear plan is probably the four it is probably the main reason a lot of people fail i think um impatience mm -hmm. is another one i think i think we're i think as a society we're very geared towards mm -hmm. um you know sort of that instant gratification, instant gratification. Right. yeah we're, we're not designed, uh, well, we're not socially designed at the moment to be sort of in it for the long term and um, to be looking at the small gains and realize not, we don't see the bigger picture. We don't look at it holistically and say, well, like if I make 1% change every week for the whole year, well, I'm going to be 50% better than I was last, you know, by the end of the year, or even more with a cumulative effect. So I think that's another reason um, people people slip up with with their goals. Um, lack of resiliency, you know, goals are hard. Um, and one thing I one thing I read and I thought it was a pretty good a pretty good way of looking at it. Is when you're setting goals, the question is not what you want to achieve; it's uh, how much pain you're willing to endure, mm -hmm. because that will determine what your goal should be. So a lack of resiliency, you know, people, I think people shoot for the moon too often, right. but they fail because they really set the goal way far in advance of what they were actually physically or mentally capable of achieving. Um, so I think for, for me, they're the three, they're probably the three big ones that I'd say if you set, if you did a survey and people answered honestly, that's, that's where it, it fell for me. Absolutely. So uh, lack uh, of a clear plan uh, at, at the beginning of the, of the year. So uh, lack of uh, resiliency, like, you know, people are, are not uh, sure exactly how much pain uh, they can they, they can endure. And, and the third one was, uh, remind me again, Peter. Impatience. Impatience. That's exactly right. So uh, the the the, uh, the fact that again we we're, we're driven into instant uh, in instant gratification and incidentally for your uh, for, for for your third one I mentioned it second. So the lack of resiliency, uh, people can actually like set goals into becoming more resilient, right? But before you know, yeah. before we become more resilient, before because we all want to be more of a lot of things, right? I mean, you know, we're gonna be stronger, we're gonna be kinder, we're gonna be a lot. A lot of different things but the thing is that before we desire those things we gotta understand and and, and accept who we are right now right because if, if we don't know exactly what your level of resiliency is is at this point you're not going to be able to 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 improve it so to, to your point if you actually um, if, if, if realize that you are impatient for example you realize you you're lacking um the uh, the strength uh, to, to to endure a lot of pain uh, or you're lacking the clarity just work on those three things and then try something that doesn't require a lot of patience to begin with doesn't require a lot of strength so that these can be goals that can be achievable was the idea that you mentioned at the beginning you have to set achievable goals right so that would be um uh, one solution. And I want to actually come back and, and attack all of these three because I think they're very interesting points. I just want to add a fourth. And I think uh, the biggest issue with New Year's resolutions is that they're called New Year's. They, they don't have to be. As a matter of fact, you know, like I have what I call like 
eternal visions, right? I mean, they never go away. They don't start at the beginning of the year. I definitely do not erase them at the end of the year. I have things on which I'm working for years on end, and I think I will probably not, never stop working on, right? So, so they're not the reason why. I mean, these are all, of course, artifacts, uh, exactly the same way that you know people say in poker, it's all one session and things like that. Of course. I want to say one thing. There is a practicality into segmentizing time. There is a practicality um, because we we are creatures of beginning, middle, and end. Like we wake up in the in the morning, you know, we you know do our day, and then we we'll go back to sleep. So we like cycles. So we're creatures of cycles. So those cycles are helpful to us. So, but my point is year is just an arbitrary cycle in actuality there should be cycles within cycles so there should be the monthly goals the weekly goals and the daily goals the yearly goals and the life goals right so there is nothing special about you know the the yearly thing so there should be goals all over the place you know on a, on a day to day minute to minute whatever what have you and they can be you know cycles upon cycles so that that I would I would add this as 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 a fourth and I, I will call it the timelessness uh, so that we have a name for it so going back to this and attack them one by one number one is lack of clarity right so let's talk a little bit about that uh this is a very big one lack of clarity um what do we mean by that in in a few words and how do we think people can actually um attack that issue like how they can they, they, they can go about what are some heuristics so that people can improve on their clarity so i think like a lack of clarity if let's let's take like more, probably one of the biggest resolutions that somebody will make at new year is to lose weight mm -hmm. so your goal is to lose weight and that's i think that's i think that's probably more an overall that's probably could be seen as an overall vision Mm -hmm. um right. that's 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 the end goal as we say um but where they fall down is they don't necessarily understand how they want to get there right. so like everyone like people will say okay so i'm gonna walk more i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna start walking more and that's absolutely brilliant walking more is always going to be good but it needs to be stacked with something else if you're walking every day but still it, eating four and a half thousand calories every day, you're not going to lose weight. So you have to, you have to see, you have to treat it holistically. You have to see the whole, you have to see the whole picture as it were, that it's not just one thing. Like making small changes is great. And it's like, if you were doing that incrementally, let's say, for example, you started walking in January and February you tackled your nutrition well then you're making progress then you have a then you have a plan and you're moving forward but most people will only kind of tackle one or they will say oh well i want to lose weight and i'll be really restrictive with my calories and but like that's not sustainable so like i mean your plan was your plan was flawed from the start so it's it's finding it's finding a balance of where you want to get to um how you're going to best get there with something that is like is sustainable, something that you enjoy, and something that you can do um, in conjunction with your environment. Like, I mean, if you're working, let's say, for example, 12 hour shifts, four days a week, well, the time constraints for you participating in, say, exercise are going to be quite limited. So you have to find something that works in you. Right. your environment what works for me who is probably at home a lot of the time it's not going to work for somebody that's in right. that situation so that's it's right. not a one size fits all and i think people get locked into sort of generic formulas about how they're gonna you know how they're gonna achieve specifically weight loss and sure. I, again just it, to make that clear but yeah it's, it's sitting down and realizing all the factors that are involved in your life that are going to impact you and making a plan based on that. So it's not as it's not as straightforward as sitting there. It's a great idea to say, I want to lose weight. You've, oh, you've got the idea. That's brilliant. That's the starting point. That's the very that's dot. That's right. Now you have to build on that. Now you have to extrapolate. Um and I did, there's some really like there's some really great um ideas and like heuristics um that, that can help you get there. But if you just sit down and put a bit of time into it, um, you can clarify 
where you want to be, how you're going to get there. Um, and yeah, Absolutely. it just it just it just requires time. It just requires a little bit more effort. And I think the results then long term are are going to be you know they're infinite if you can if you can formulate a plan and stick to it. Right. Let me let me uh, let me uh, comment a little bit on that effort because the some of the examples that you use, for example, like lose a lot of calories. I think uh, the and and you mentioned that example as a bad example, right? I mean, as the things that people should not do. I think the the reason you're correct about this is because again, the person who says I want to I'm going to lose a lot of calories or uh, I'm going to go to to the gym like five days a week. Um, from the previous example, I think the point uh, they're missing there is that they're not self outsourcing. Yet again, uh, be besides the lack of sustainability, uh, the reason why this lack of sustainability exists is because they're not self-outsourcing. What they're really telling to ourselves is like future self be strong enough to be able to endure this thing that it was impossible to me until now. And yet somehow magically on hopes alone, I'm going to have the strength in the future to do that thing. So to me, that's not self-outsourcing. That, that is, you know, just do something in the future that you cannot do now. That is not what goal setting is, should, should be about, right? You mentioned, for example, a person who goes to work, you know, uh, you know, for 12, 12, 12 hours a, a day, right? And immediately what comes to mind in a situation like this, again, every person is different, but immediately what comes to me is that, hmm, that means that person doesn't have enough time to go to the gym, and yes, that is a good excuse. I know a lot of people saying, well, you know, like someone like David Gogg is like, there's no excuse. And he's he's right, but most people are not David Goggins yet, you know. So no, that's no. you need to start from, from from level one. And but here is the thing, like where a person like that, for example, could start. Have you ever considered biking to work every Friday? Duncan, what? I'm like, you know, 20 miles away. Okay, 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 okay. Sure. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know, every person is different. Have you considered, you know, like biking a mile and then put your bike into your car and then go to work or like, you know, bike the last mile or something like that? That would be another another thing to do. Or whatever it is, like, have you considered, you know, like biking to the grocery store maybe once a week? You know, if you have to go to the grocery store, like something like that. Uh, and of course, I'm not just saying that biking is the only solution, right? But, but, yeah. but, but, like that is self outsourcing, right? Because that's not a decision you have to make every Friday. That decision has been made for you, right? And it's a different type of decision that it doesn't necessarily require the same willpower as the the one that says, you know, like from now on, I'm just gonna like you know, stay hungry. Because like, like, like Peter, you said earlier, like you get into the situation of vagueness and that vagueness can, can, can hurt um, results. Right. So specificity is, is very important. I mean, not sustainability is also important, achievable goals, all of these things, but I think really it comes down to little practical things that have pre-decided for us, they have been predecided for us, right? Because I think that's that's where the, the the specificity can get can get into the picture. They have to be predecided. They have to be very 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 specific. Like um, like knowing, like if if you are to say, you know, for example, I'm going to go to the gym to uh, to lose weight. Know your program. Like what exactly are you going to do? Like something that has been decided, and it's something easily. You can easily follow, right? I mean, if you can only do it for twenty minutes once a week, once a month, even just just do that thing, you know that that that, that can help you. If or it can be it, it can be something else, like you know, I mean, I'm gonna set set a a, a rule. I'm I'm not gonna eat outside, you know, something like that, or you know, whatever it is that that works for you. Anything that basically limits limits uh, limits your decision. Um, yeah, I think just 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 on something that you were saying, it, it kind of it sparked the, you know, you were you were saying about you know if you make a decision, you know, say to say your bike bike on a Friday to walk or something like that. It something I was reading about um, earlier is the idea of the opt in versus the opt out mm -hmm. situation. So if you predetermined that you're going to 
you know, do this, you know, let's say biking or, you know, go to the gym on this specific day at this specific time. If you've already predetermined that, then to not go, you have to consider why you're opting out rather right. than rather than making reasons why you should go. Right. And that's that can be really help with mindset and focus that you're, you know, if you have to make excuses why you're not going, it's probably harder for you to to not do it. Right. Whereas if you have to make reasons to actually go and do it, we can easily just turn around and say, yeah, well, it's just not happening. Well, yeah, that opt-in versus I love opt-in, it. Um, I think it's a really good, uh, a really good help for, for mindset in that situation. I, I, absolutely. And let me try to reframe this because I think it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's easier to fail when you have already planned it in some sense, right? Because that is now part of your future and versus not doing it to begin with, right? If you have planned that bike ride on Friday and Friday comes and you don't do it, you failed. But if you said, yes. you know what, what can I do today? Well, let's try it to work. You know, no harm, no foul, right? Because it wasn't, it wasn't planned. And I think, I think really that idea, uh, I know we, we bring in that podcast a lot of it, that idea ties to having a little bit of skin in the game, have, have a little bit of something to lose, you know, which to poker players is an idea which is very, very well known, right? You know, we put our money, we put our own, you know, uh, sort of like wealth uh, on the table. Uh, but having something to lose, even if it's like a mini game, I think it's very important, like accountability, right? I mean, having something to lose. It, it's okay. Even if we feel like, you know, a failure for that day, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, failing is, is a good thing from time to time. That's, that's excellent. So, so to summarize, you know, uh, some ways to increase uh, specificity is to, to plan it, not over plan it and not overdo it. Find little things which fit into your life, be accountable for them. Right. Uh, if you fail them, say, you know what, I failed and it's okay. I mean, I'm going to move to do the next thing, but be, 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 be accountable and um, make sure that these things are things that at this point in your life are achievable. Yes. Um, which brings us to the next one, impatience, right? This is, this is a very big one. We, we live in a world of instant information on top of instant gratification, but like instant information, a lot of things are available to us. And, and arguably, you know, that's another thing we've argued with Brad in the past, you know, whether that has weakened us or not, it's it's up for debate, but I mean, it's- It's definitely up for debate. Yeah. It's up for debate, but there's a lot of temptations out there and it it, it is easy. Uh, we live in a world of easy. Right. I mean, I, I remember my, my my grandfather, he had to walk like two hours to go to school. Like, I mean, his shoes were completely destroyed. At some point he was walking barefoot, you know. So we don't have those issues anymore for, for, for the most part. I mean, uh, there, there are, of course, exceptions to the rule, but for, but for the most part. So what is impatience, Peter, and how can we deal with it? So I suppose like... Coming back to my uh, coming back to my earlier example of weight loss, because I think it, it, it kind of fits really well for most for most um, situations with this. Let's say this. Let's say you start off this week and you decide I'm losing weight. Diet, you're training, you're working on everything's going great. You step on the scale a week later, and you're down a pound mm -hmm. or half a pound. And all of a sudden, but I'm after working my ass off right. for the last week, and this is all I've achieved. Like that's that's not good enough. Like I I want I want like four or five pounds down this week, or you know I want I want more. You know I want to, I want to see more. It's, that's not how it works, mm -hmm. you know. And I think people sort of try at that stage. People are sort of. Well, why am I doing all this effort for stuff? I'm not seeing anything. I'm not getting any benefit out of this. But again, they're not seeing the bigger picture. So they kind of, they get impatient like that. They get impatient, you know, and then it's kind of like, well, you know, maybe there's a quicker way. There has to be a quick fix. And they might go to Google and there are a thousand and one quick fixes for weight loss. 
and absolutely none of them work. <laughs> the work the exactly. exactly. No, that's I, right. I'd say most of them work in the very short term. But if you want long term, if you want long term results, you're gonna have to put in long term effort. And I think it's 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 really that simple. But unfortunately, with the instant gratification, yeah, people just aren't prepared to wait for those and accept that tiny gains have a cumulative effect. Absolutely. And then it, it, it comes back to the distinction between goals and vision. What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to um, to become healthy or are you trying to uh, to be healthy today? Like that, 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 that's the difference, because if you really are trying to um, find a quick fix in Google, I mean, it's going to work for today, let's say. It may or may not work, but like, let's say it works. I'll give you that 100%. Let's say it works. But is that what you want? Is 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 what you want is to just look good right now and who cares about tomorrow? Or is the goal to actually, the vision, right? That's why it becomes, we need a different word for that. It's not It's not a goal. It, it, it's a vision. It's a lifestyle, right? And if we are talking about potentially changing the lifestyle, that's a situation where it doesn't matter what we do today. What matters is what we're going to be able to maintain for the next five or 10 years, which is why personally, and we mentioned I mean, we mentioned a little bit of um, Warren Buffett and uh, Berkshire Hathaway last week, right? The idea of long-term, the idea that, you know, having this long-term vision, it's not about today. It's not about, and 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 if you listen to people who've been trying to do this for a long time, like doing really hard things, like again, we mentioned David Goggins earlier, they're not doing the workout to lose weight. They do the workout for the workout. It is actually the act itself is the reward, not something in the future, right? And this is a huge difference between, you know, like the journey and the destination is, so the question is what, are, are, do we really care about the reward? Because if we only care about the reward, the process will fade. Or do we care about the actual process, right? Because where is the impatience when the actual reward is the process, right? Think about like where can kind of the word impatience fit when the actual reward is the process? Like what, what are you saying? Like okay, I'm impatient to get into the process, right? I'm I'm impatient. So I want, I'm impatient to get into the gym. It doesn't make any sense, right? But the impatience yeah. we're talking about is the impatience of the reward. So if you actually eliminate sort of the reward, all that's left is the actual process. <laughs> Right. It, it, oh, oh, of course, I mean, a lot of people are probably screaming at their devices. It's like, you know, who the hell likes to torture themselves? Like, but is it really torturing? Or is it like you feel like a superhuman when you actually like do that? You know, you've never like picture yourself like you've never run in your life. And then all of a sudden you run a full mile and you look at yourself like all in sweaty. And like, holy smokes, I did this. Or like you have, you've never played poker professionally before. And then you just sit at the table. You make a very few good decisions. You see through your opponent's mistakes. And then you walk off the table and say, oh my God, I, I just made my first soul read. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it the money that you care about? Or like, it's just like, like elevated yourself into like a super hero level you, you you know you know what i mean peter absolutely yeah that especially that that's actually a great one because i have like i've made those reads at the table mm -hmm. and it didn't matter whether the pot was for 10 or 100 big <laughs> there you go the, the pleasure derived in the moment was i made that call i knew you had nothing i called you with ace high and i was right right you know because I had to read and my read was perfect. And my knowledge base is such that, yeah, I'm that's that's my level. I, I, that's the level I'm at that I can that I can make those reads. The money was absolutely secondary in that situation. 
that's that's yeah. that's leveling up in real time right i mean you yeah. see your level up Absolutely. right i mean you hear the noise like the game noise achievement unlocked right i mean it's just it just yeah. feels it just feels great i mean that thing but there's no there's no sort of like external reward i mean the, the reward is the leveling up like i mean the, the the skill has been has been upgraded and i think um Although you know, um, ph philosophy is not necessarily um, as good as having a, a, a practical heuristics. Uh, it serves a different purpose. It, it is useful in just setting a proper mindset. You know, like and chasing after rewards could in itself be a trap. You know, but like realizing that that the real reward is the process and you really like I want to see myself leveling up, you know, could actually be, you know, its its own reward. And then there is no room for impatience in there other than, you know, just I mean, I want to do more of this, <laughs> more of this and more of this and more of this. And if you are impatient to, you know to go to the gym or whatever it is that your goal is, or, you know, to make another soul read, that's, that's great impatience, honestly. I think a, a really good example of how small gains can be, can be really good and have great benefit. Um, Pat Riley, when he was coach of the LA Lakers, mm -hmm. the uh, basketball thing back in the eighties, mm -hmm. and like had this amazing team in around 1985, and they didn't even win their conference. Right. So he came up with the system of, as he called it, career best effort. So when a player joined the team, they got all their stats, brought all their stats in together, and he got their average. He wasn't interested in what the person did on their best day or the worst mm -hmm. day. He got the average. And all he asked from his players was, every time they played, 1% better than they had done before. Right. Career best effort. And they rank them against other players in similar positions and give them scores. And eight months after putting that process in place, they won the championship. Right, right. <laughs> and then went back to back and won a second. Right, right. Yeah. With one percent gain each week. You know, it's it sounds simple. There was probably a lot of hard work in getting that one percent. Well, it's that's but the idea is there the cumulative effect, and I think that's the bit that people miss out on that small gain add up very quickly. That's very good, and, and and this is a very good point, Peter. And that's where philosophy can be helpful, right? Because looking in the right direction is the difference between like walking uh, towards work and then walking over a cliff, right? I mean, it's not it's not what's going to get you there. It's not where you're looking at, but like if you're putting your force in the wrong direction can actually hurt you or help you. So this, what you're describing right now is just looking in the right direction and just basically saying, all I need is a little bit of, um, a little bit of an extra gain on top of what I already have. And the cumulative effect is going to take care of the rest. Right. I mean, this is, this is, again, this is what philosophy can be helpful for. Right. And then you find the heuristics on how to get there. Right. Because, I mean, Pat Riley it didn't just say, you know, just do one one percent. He actually gave them specific guidelines. Yeah. Yes. As, as you know, yeah, I mean, he has the skills and the, the, skills, that's, yeah. Where the yeah, that's where the, the expert knowledge of the field comes in. But like that, like for things like weight loss or becoming a better player, there are coaches out there, there's information out there. The sources are there. You can you can the knowledge is there. You just have to, you know, you just have to reach out and grab it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, um, very good. And I guess one uh, I guess we have two two more things to, to, to think about uh, here. So the the next uh, big hurdle uh, is uh, lack of resiliency. Right. So the idea that um, I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not X enough. I'm not, I cannot do that. Um, I'm not like the other person. And I think that's, that, that's actually, I would say a very good thing. Like saying I am not X or I'm not Y and realizing that, I think this is actually, if, the, if this is it's true, like self-realization is a very important thing. So if you're right, that's great. So, okay, you're not this, 
what, what are you? So how do people uh, deal with the issue of lack of resiliency? I think um, it's a, a really good way of like, when we're measuring things, we have a we have a habit of as as people we measure forwards mm -hmm. like that. We measure against our future self. Right. But I think uh, and James, this was something that James Clear um, proposed was the idea of measuring backwards. Mm -hmm. So we measure mm -hmm. we measure ourselves against our most recent effort. You know, so like your goal might be, let's say in the gym, for example, your goal long term might be to bench press 250 pounds, let's mm -hmm. say. Last week, you bench pressed 150. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not jumping from 150 to 250. Your most recent was 150. So this week, let's go for 155. Right. And if you hit that, then you can move up slightly. If you don't hit that, if you fail, if you can only lift 145, well, that's now your, your more recent effort and you build from there. So build on what you have now and use that as a, as a means of moving forward rather than, and that's, again, I think that's another form of uh, self-outsource. We're, we're not, you know, we're not um, measuring ourselves against this uh, mythical futuristic person that has never been. We're measuring ourselves against the present day uh, person that we are with our limitations that we are right now and understanding those limitations and using that to our advantage and making, you know, short-term achievable goals that when we hit them, we can move to the next one. And like that, you might fail along the way, but you're not failing huge. Your failures may be small because you're not, you're not looking to improve it in 10x, um, you know, whatever you are, it's it, a very small percentage. Exactly correct. And just just to, to, to elaborate a little bit on that idea of the failure, if we actually set self-outsourcing properly, we can avoid the whole concept of failure altogether. What do I mean by that? Um, it is often said, and it applies to poker as well, do not set numerical goals, right? Like you mentioned, you mentioned bench at 250 and, and, and it's, it's good heuristically and it can, it can be helpful, but I, I would go as far as saying, don't even mention numbers exactly the same way to say, I'm going to have like X amount of winning sessions. It's not really up to us, right? I mean, that's only could potentially be adding extra pressure to our future self. Right. But I mean, exactly. from, from what you just said, you, you you sort of like implied it that you know it's not the two fifty; it is what you can do now, right? I mean, if you can go from yes. one, yes. so so what I would say is like, what do I mean? You cannot fail. Like, if your goal is you know, go ahead and push that bar, you know, ten times push it, whether or not it's going to go up or not, you don't know, but you did push it. You push that bar, you know, like you put like. In, in of course, I mean, you can fail, right? Because in the sense you don't even show up. I mean, that's the real failure. The real failure is actually not showing up. So we want to make, the reason why I like this concept of self-outsourcing when, when employed properly is that it literally takes away pressure from our future self because the future self knows exactly what to do. So what is... You know, the goal today, go behind the bar or below the bar if we're doing chest press and push it, push it three times. You know, that's what we're going to do for today. Oh, it didn't get off the ground. Okay, then we push again with lower weight, whatever, whatever it is what we do. And, and that can actually start building the, the habit, right? And again, then maybe gets off the ground. Oh, it got off the ground. Okay, now that it got off the ground, let's do that five more times next Tuesday. <laughs> You know, like this, yeah. some, something something along those lines. So in, in, in that sense, failure can only happen if we don't show up. And we want it to be like it, it's the uh, opt in, opt out that you mentioned earlier. Right. I mean, we want that yes. failure to yeah. happen. We want to feel accountable, you know, because we didn't show up. But we don't the failure to be unfair. I hate to use that word so much because it's but what do I mean by unfair. We we. We don't want the failure to happen because of external reasons that we didn't control. 
that's going to suck, right? Yes. I mean, that's, that's going to make us really hopeless, right? So that's why, you know, it is, it is important. And, 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 and on what I'm, I'm reading between the lines, you know, 150, 155 is that like we want to make it so that the only possibility of failure is that us not showing up. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I, I think even expanding on that idea, we can, I think we can sort of, we could reframe it a little bit as well. You know, if we, if we take it more as when we don't hit, you know, say this very short term goal, we can sit back and have, a, it's a learning experience right. rather than an actual failure. And it's only thing of the better if we don't learn from it. Right. Like, right. for example, was there something, was, what do we think is the reason why couldn't I achieve this today? Well, maybe I'm just not up to that. You know, I haven't reached that level yet. I'm not right. strong enough to lift that bar at this present moment. Or maybe I was a little bit under the weather. You know, I wasn't in, you know, 100%. There's... We can we can look at things differently and we can we can view failure in different ways. But I think I think viewing it as a, a learning experience and an opportunity to to sort of grow. And I think that's what helps build our, our, our resiliency as well. Like I mean, especially like I mean, even bringing it back to poker. Like if we play a hand, me and you play a hand for a hundred big blinds, if we get it in pre-flop, eight spirits of king, it just happens. That hand plays itself, and we all know that that's just, and most people just accept that and move on. You get it all in on the flop with a set, and you get set over set, that feels shit. Right. That's where the resiliency comes in, and you have to sit back and realize that that's that's just that situation will just happen. It's exactly the same as aces versus kings. The outcome is predetermined. You did exactly all the right things. But it just didn't, you know, there was a bit of failure there. But it's not your failure. It's just your hand failed. You didn't. Um, and we go through that. And we that's how we build resiliency in poker. We, we learn how to accept these losses. And I think the same idea can be applied to almost anything. Once we understand what's meant to happen and, you know, what what's possible and what's impossible and where you know, how we can, how we can move through that. Absolutely. And, and, and this is where philosophy can be helpful, right? Because, but, but, but both, both philosophy can be helpful. The concept of vision can be helpful and the concept of self outsourcing philosophy can be helpful because we can sit there and, and, and talk about this exactly. What, like you said, Peter, it's supposed to happen. It is going to happen. I will actually go one step ahead and even say it has to happen. Otherwise the game is unfair, so to speak, right? Because Kings, I'll take even the simpler example, Kings versus Aces. Uh, and let's say we get a bad beat, Kings beat our Aces or whatever. It has to happen. It has to happen 18% of the time. It has to happen. Yes. We have to lose to pay back all the money we have won unfairly. We only deserve 82% of the of the pot and we win 100% of the pot all this time. So we have to give it back. That's the fair thing from a game theory yeah. perspective, right? So this is where philosophy can be helpful, right? So, but the self-outsourcing part helps because we can't have that conversation while, while we're tilting out of our asses, right? I mean, that has to happen when we're calm, you know, it makes sense, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, uh, easy to interact. So, and, and, and this is where also like the vision comes into play because again, we're not really thinking of the short term. We're not thinking just this hand, we're thinking about, all of the hands that are going to happen in the future because we're not thinking of giving up anytime soon or quitting anytime yeah. soon, right? So all of these things can be can, can be uh, um, can come together, in, and in particularly, I think that uh, one thing that is that is very important is how we can deal with that situation in the moment, but hopefully in a way that has been predecided by us for us. That's why the self outsourcing right i mean an example of that would be we we got the kings uh we got sorry we got the aces we ran into kings uh the kings won nice hand fuming perhaps but then the last time we're going to say nice hand was going to be less fuming because again we're already um pre um programming our body 
to have a reaction which we usually do when we're happy, like nice hand, you know, you're saying yeah. you're saying wishes. So that's how we can actually get into into that situation. And, and I know it's easier said than done for a lot of people. I know I have a lot of students who, you know, have that issue since, since, since the beginning, but um, it is important to take ourselves at a different place in time to make those decisions because we cannot make those decisions then and there. So we have to find a way to build a wormhole so somebody else will make that decision for us, not necessarily ourselves. That's the idea of self-outsourcing. Right? I mean, that's that's the, 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 the weird thing. Uh, but um, you, you're absolutely correct when you're saying that we have to take the set over set and make these connections, like, and see that it's it's the same thing. You know, the only essentially, uh, this is this is an excellent idea that you're presenting. The only um, um, additional thing, essentially, that I'm saying is that this um, can only be done after the hand is over or before the hand even started, right? <laughs> and uh, you can't, you can't, you can't do it in the moment. Like, in the, uh, that's right. <laughs> the, the, as, as as Brad likes to say, the battlefield is for fighting. Right. The, the training ground is for everything else. That's right. But once you're on the battlefield, you're there to fight, and it's it's only going to detract from what you're trying to achieve if you're trying to if you're trying to learn in that moment because that's that's, right. that's not what that time is for. That's very that's yeah very wise that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. come out with a let's have a couple of uh yes, his moments. Of, uh, pearls of wisdom. Yeah, that he likes to <laughs> impart on them. Every now and again, uh, very good. So the the other thing is sort of like you know the, the timelessness of 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 goals and and of visions, um, or the cycles upon cycles, right? I mean that, that there's nothing special about New Year, although New Year is resetting yet again uh, one cycle. So maybe you know to, to to close this conversation, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Like how can people uh, what is the value, if any, to you know not restrict ourselves to a specific cycle and then have multiple cycles? How does that tie to like a sort of like a, a, a greater vision? And if there is any value, how can people potentially you know build a habit to um, never end setting goals towards a vision? I think, like yeah, I think we're all kind of I think we have this natural inclination um, to be drawn to like starting points mm -hmm. when we want to, you know, turn over a new, like, I mean, very few people start. I, I, I mentioned this idea of this to you last week. You very rarely find somebody starting a diet or a weight loss program on a Thursday. You right. know, it's always a month. It's usually, usually a Monday. And I think preferably at the start of the month right. and the new year then is just sort of the ultimate Right. The ultimate cleanser, you know, we're, right. we're leaving behind the shackles of 2022 and ushering in the new dawn of 2023. But as you say, in reality, it's just it's just arbitrary. It's just it's kind of given us uh, a psychological anchor point for for starting off. Whereas, really, the best time to start anything new or that's you know that you're uh, trying to improve and get better at is now. Like, I mean, the, the best right. time to start is always, is always now. Oh, like, that. why can't you start now? What's, what's stopping you? And it's, it's, it really is just a, it's definitely just a, a psychological, um, arbitrary distinction that we, you know, decide that, you know, we're going to start this in the new year, that it's going to be a year long goal rather than having a more immediate short term, you know, let's take this week to week and we'll build on it from there or, We'll, we'll track it month by month. Um, and there are benefits, as you say, like to the to doing doing it all. Like, I mean, if you're as you say, if your overall vision is to be healthier and you know get yourself in better shape, that's that's the overall vision. So then your short-term goals by the week, you know, what am I gonna do this week? I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna be healthy. Monthly goal. You know how have I how have I progressed, and what am I going to do moving forward now for the month ahead? What's going to get me closer to my to my overall 
cohesion. Um, and short term goals, medium term goals, longer, long term goals, they all have a place in that vision. And that's and I think that's the key that people restrict themselves to the sort of the longer term goals, whereas if they bring in these short term goals and medium term goals to go to go alongside the vision, it gives them it gives them it almost sort of in a way fulfills the instant gratification um right. side of us because we, we right. achieve something now. So right. if our goal was to, you know, eat healthier this week and go to the gym at least once. If we've done that by the end of the week, yeah, goal achieved. That's now right. what are we going to do for this week? So you get that instant grab, and that can help with that. Um, that can help with the uh, impatience as well because we're making progress. We're seeing the achievements in the short term. Absolutely, and notice and notice in what you're describing, what you what you're saying, right? Like the. Not what it is, and I agree with you 100%. Like the idea that that person, you know, goes to the gym and they're happy about it. So they're, they're not really happy for the reward. They're really happy for the process. Like, I mean, the process. Yes. And, and, I, and yeah. I agree. Like, I mean, I think that, like, if we can actually make the process its own reward, then that is really the, the ultimate, the, the so called enlightenment, right? And, and incidentally, and I've mentioned that in one of the earlier uh, podcasts, there is science behind it. And Andrew Huberman talks a lot about that concept that uh, because we are sort of like, uh, quote unquote, addicted to dopamine, and I'm paraphrasing and I'm, I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm using it incorrectly on purpose here. The idea is that because our brain expects that dopamine rush, right? I mean, which usually comes with the reward, we get weakened during the process or more specifically desensitized. So our body doesn't necessarily produce the same amount of effort because dopamine hasn't been produced during the doing of the thing, right? The our brain is like, you know what? I'll get the dopamine later. Why bother right now? I'll get, but if the own reward is the process then the body's like okay this douchebag over here is not going to reward me with anything i might as well produce some dopamine right now and get naturally high and then you get the more effort and the more energy and of course i'm paraphrasing but i i i love huberman he's he's awesome and 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 that's the idea that's the that's the, 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 that's the gist of it behind it so there is science behind the concept that it's really the journey, not the destination, right? Who who would have thunk, right? I mean, it's just yeah. there is actually the there is wisdom to, um, uh, to 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 this to this old saying. So um, anyway, I just wanted to make make that comment because what you're describing right now, like you know, the me uh, medium term goals and the short term goals, eventually, like the the sense of achievement, is for the process. And, and absolutely and that is a, a a beautiful thing i honestly like don't have anything else to add i mean that was that was uh excellently excellently uh described and and again i mean heuristically um you're talking about something that also like people from other areas in this case neuroscience you know they happen to to fully agree with and like again we see that the beauty of philosophy like connecting different uh, different disciplines so um so let's let's summarize for the listeners some of the things that we we, we talked about, right? I mean, um, so what are some simple again guidelines? Again, in 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 short sentences, I guess. What are some simple guidelines for people uh, to self uh, uh, to set goals and also the four pitfalls um, we discussed? So I think keeping your goals, uh, keep them. Uh, achievable, achievable goals. Keep them, keep them interesting. Interesting. Um, keep them, yeah. Keep them, keep them achievable. Keep them interesting. Um, have a plan. Right. Lay out your plan. Have a plan, and enjoy the process. That's right. It can absorb the process. I think uh, just a really good quote from James Clear is that expertise is a process. That's right. It's not an outcome. That's it's right. Not an outcome. It's a process. It is. A I process. think that really that really summed it up. Um, and remember that small gains have cumulative effects, and 
one percent a day or half a pound a week all adds up by the end of the year and there we just like is it Brad was here? We had a cat running through the screen. So <laughs> Absolutely. apologies to the list. Yeah. We, 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 we love cats. We love animals. Yeah. And, and the best time to act is now, right? Is now. Absolutely. And and I would what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? And I would even, you know, like just uh, quote unquote polish it a little bit by just saying the best time to act is when you're uh clear headed and you can actually make the sacrifice of the present for your future self, right? When you feel that you're more mature than average, when you feel that more tranquil than average, when you feel that wiser than average, you know, in a moment of epiphany, in a moment of tranquility, that is a time where your present self can make sacrifices for your future self. The, the future self that, you know, uh, is completely unconscious because they're running to do three million different things and, you know, they just try to juggle life. And that future self needs your help right now on when you have that moment of clarity, I, I would argue, which is, you know, why uh, I'm using the term, you know, like self-outsourcing here, right? that idea. So we can we can help that, that future help, uh, self the best way we can. Uh, besides that, uh, we should probably wish everybody, you know, <laughs> happy, happy holidays <laughs> in, in, enjoy with, with friends and family and, uh, and Peter, where can people find us and specifically where can they find you? So people can find me in, uh, Greatness Village. So if you go to Chasing Broker, uh, Chasing Broker Greatness.com, click on community, there's a link there that will take you into the Slack group. And you will find me there. Duncan is Duncan is also in there. And um, for anyone interested in poker or getting better at poker, it's absolutely the best community online. And um, it's check it out. It's definitely worth it. Um, and then people can also find me on Twitter uh, at Peter Birmingham on there. Um, drop me a follow. Drop me a message. I will respond if. You know, any ideas for any ideas for future philosophical Fridays or anything you'd uh, you might want to hear discussed. We're always open to uh, always open to suggestions. Absolutely, and they're always welcome. And uh, and and same here. You can find me in the Twitters, uh, ask the math dr, and also um, on YouTube. Why Alex beats uh, Bobby, uh, spelled in uh, the British way, B O B B I E, uh, as Brad always like to mention. And yeah, like drop in, um, drop a comment, uh, like, dislike, whatever you want to do. Uh, and uh, uh, we will see you all there. And in the meantime, enjoy uh, your time with friends and family. Have uh, wonderful holidays and a very, very happy, happy new year. Uh, with or without resolutions, it's entirely up to you. But hopefully, if you decide to make some resolutions, hopefully, you know, we trigger some some food for thought. Well, Peter, yeah. thank you again. Thank you again for 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 joining. Uh, do you have some 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 last words you want to share with the audience? No, I was just gonna I was just gonna wish you and the listener a happy new year, Duncan, and uh, we'll see you in 2023. Thank you very much, my friend. Likewise, and take care, everybody. <laughs>